Hello. In today's video, I'm going to be taking a quick look at the Universal Audio Apollo Twin X Duo Heritage Edition. Uh, specifically, this is the USB 3 edition for Windows systems since I am a Windows guy, not a Mac user. Sorry, everybody. Didn't mean to disappoint. Today's video also is completely unscripted, so forgive me if I wander just a little bit, but I wanted to get this recorded quickly because I do need to get this installed and set up on my editing PC so that I can continue making my usual technical content for you guys. Normally, this isn't something that uh, I would dig into, but this is an incredibly popular audio interface, and I know there are a lot of people out there that are looking for information about it, like I was. I am not an audio engineer. I am just a YouTuber that wants a top quality interface so that I don't have any problems with anything so that I can just focus on making content, which is what I do best. So most of the reviews and things like that that I found out there were from audio engineers. And they talked about the latency and the frequency response and the plugins and the reverb and the preamps and all this kind of stuff that Maybe one day I'll understand what it is, but for now, all I need this thing to do is provide me solid output and solid input. And if I can use a plugin to use like a de -esser or maybe a little bit of compression or an EQ, that's great. Anything beyond that, out of my realm. So if you're here watching this video expecting something from an audio engineer, you can feel free to move right along now. If you're a YouTuber that has seen a lot of these and you're just interested in hearing about it from a YouTube point of view, stick around. All right, so we're gonna begin by unboxing this bad boy here, but let's take a look, All right? You can see this is the Heritage Edition, uh, which means apparently that it comes with some different plugins that the regular Twin X version did not. Uh, the Duo means that it has two DSPs or uh, digital signal processors, I believe is what that stands for, right? And on the back here, it tells us about a whole bunch of plugins that this thing comes with. Uh, this actually is, there's currently a rebate on this that goes, uh, I believe for the next few days anyway, probably by the time I publish this, you'll have missed it, my apologies, but uh, that does allow the free download of a bunch more plugins and real-time analog recording that, ooh, that's nice. So that the letters here are actually uh, engraved, like a wedding invitation. And when I say engraved, I don't mean like stamped into the box, if you're not familiar, like there, it's heavy duty ink that actually is raised up from the box. So when you run your finger over it, you can feel it yeah, this here too as well. Yeah, this this is some really nice packaging. But for what they charge for this thing, I, I would expect it to be pretty nice. But let's uh let's use our trusty Matt Helm dog bone here and get this bad boy open and see what we're looking at. What is in the box? All right, we've got our audio interface and we've got a getting started card. Got a power brick. And it looks like some adapters for the power brick, depending on where you live. So yeah, this is Obviously not going to plug into anything, right? So we'll need the US power. Interestingly, there's one in here that looks very similar to the US power, but it doesn't have any holes cut in it. If anybody knows what this one's for, let me know in the comments, I'm interested. There we go, now we've got a US power brick. Got the getting started card here. It's got quite a nice graphic on the back there. I like that. Universal Audio Engineers Bench Testing, the original 1176 
limiting amplifier circa 1967. <laughs> cool. Getting started. Go to their website, connect it to the computer, download the software, register the hardware, authorize your plugins. Sounds pretty simple. We'll find out exactly how simple it is in this video. On the back, we've got two mic or line level inputs. These can both provide phantom power. We've got monitor left and right out, and then we've got an additional pair of line outs. These can be used to go to external, uh, external hardware or uh, headphone outs or another pair of monitors. Power on off switch, optical in for connecting to expansion interfaces, um, our USB 3 port and our 12 volt supply. On the front, we've got quarter inch uh, instrument input. And this, if you plug something into here, this will automatically disable, I believe it's mic line one. Not positive though. So we'll have to go look that up if you really wanna know. Uh, and then over here on the other side, we've got a quarter inch TRS uh, headphone. This thing has got some, got some weight to it. This is all, all metal. Um, which is nice given the, the price. If I'd taken this out of the box and it was plastic for what they charge for this thing, I probably wouldn't be terribly happy. But uh, yeah, let's take this over the computer and get it connected up and see how long that takes and what that process looks like. All right, before we get started on this, I uninstalled and removed my old audio interface and drivers. And I went to the website specified here on the card at Universal Audio. So let's take a look at what the registration and driver install process looks like. So once you register, put in your name, email address, password, you know, create an account, all that kind of stuff. Uh, connect your Apollo to the computer, right? So I've already got the USB cables connected and power and everything. I just need to turn it on. All right, so it is powered on now. So I'll go ahead and click next. And I'm gonna download the software. One eternity later. All right, so download the software. And here's the required settings for install. All right, so let's do this. Okay, disable Windows notification sounds. Windows optimizations, let's see. That's already done. That's all done. That is just standard stuff. Nothing to worry about here. Okay. Easy, all right, let's install that software. All right, we need new firmware, so we'll go ahead and load that. Now we need to power it off. Power it on. All right, and now we need to restart the computer. I will be right back. All right, so after restart, this box automatically popped up and this web page automatically opened and we're downloading our plugin authorizations. 
Let's take a look at the control software. So here's console. And no, I'm not gonna show you a whole bunch of stuff about how to do anything with it, because I don't know yet. I just installed it. I'll figure it out. And there's also another piece of software, UAD meter and control panel, which is this little guy here. Not entirely sure what that is, but I'm sure it's in the documentation. All right, after the system rebooted, I got a message that popped up and said that there was no USB connection available to my Apollo. So I went and looked and I had it plugged into a USB 3 port, but I wasn't using a USB 3 cable. So don't make that mistake because it doesn't work. So now I've got to go and read a whole bunch of instructions and register to get my additional plugins and get those installed and figure out how all this stuff works so that I can record three more videos for the channel today yet. So I'm gonna run, but I'll get this video up as soon as I can. I hope you guys like it. I hope you found some information in there. Um, I do really like the, the look and the feel and the ease of control uh, of this interface. And I think that you guys will like it too. I can't really tell you how well the plugins and, and all this other kind of stuff works just yet. Uh, so I'll make a follow-up video to this that's got yeah, maybe a 30-day or 90-day review or something with some feedback on it. But so far, so good. Just make sure you use the right cable. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.